Hello. Welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is an attorney, Jeffrey Hare. Uh, he has his law practice in San Jose, California. He provides client-focused, outcome-oriented legal services. Uh, he is also a licensed real estate broker and real estate investor. And Jeffrey specializes in real estate law, real estate property transactions, entity formation, commercial leases, loan documents, land use law, zoning, and land use changes, municipal law, and mediation services. So that's a lot of stuff. Uh, he's familiar with issues involved in using self-directed IRAs for real estate investments, including set up, setting up uh, limited liability companies or LLCs for real estate operations inside of an IRA or a Roth account. And today, that's what we're going to be talking about, using a checkbook LLC to invest IRA and Roth funds. Now, as I get started in this, I want to caution you, as I often do, that uh, we're discussing areas in a complex area and so we view this as a starting point for a bigger discussion with your uh, your tax lawyer uh, tax CPA uh, and we want you to get qualified legal and tax advice Jeffrey thanks for joining me today my pleasure okay and I'm just gonna guess call you Jeff and keep it short um, okay well what is a checkbook LLC <laughs> well, if you Google the word term, you'll see many hits on the term Google, uh, checkbook LLC. What it is basically is, you have to understand, it's the use of a self-directed IRA in combination with setting up a separate entity known as a limited liability company. Mm -hmm. And so to understand that, you have to understand first what a self-directed IRA is, and then that is the funding mechanism for the limited liability company or LLC. Okay. So you pointed out the question, what is a self-directed IRA? Or I guess also we can say a Roth account, since a Roth is a special type of IRA. That is correct. Uh, most IRAs that people are familiar with, such as what they have in their 401k or their IRA uh, or a Roth account, if they've set one up through their companies, are generally invested in what they call traditional investments, such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds. These are called traditional investments. Mm -hmm. uh, about 25, 30 years ago, um, Congress authorized uh, them the use of money to be invested in other matters, or what they called non-traditional assets, the most popular of which, of course, is real estate. However, most custodians today um, do not allow, uh, do not have, are not set up, or they do not allow people to invest their IRAs into real estate. So the self-directed IRA is where you can invest your IRA money into businesses or into real estate or what they call non-traditional assets. Also, we call them alternative investments. Yeah, that's I right. Think. Yeah, okay. So, um, as we said, then in most conventional places, like a bank or a brokerage company, you wouldn't find this type of account, right? Right. Most of them uh, would prefer that if you're going to use, if you want to invest in a, a, an alternative investment, uh, such as real estate, they, they ask that you go to a custodian that specializes in those types of assets. Okay, so there are special custodians that do this type of service. Um, so what are some features of an LLC that makes it attractive as an operating structure within an IRA or a Roth account? All right, let me take a step back and explain okay. that um, if you're going to be investing in real estate and you want to use your IRA, uh, mm -hmm. One of the problems you run into is that you have to first identify the asset you want to invest in, and then you have to approach your IRA custodian and uh, tell them to please send the funds over to the title company so that things can be processed on time. Even the best custodians have to take time to review that request. And if you're trying to do a fast transaction, you need, you need the speed and the flexibility uh, to handle those. The checkbook LLC allows that. The okay. limited liability company setup allows you to put the funds in there and then you can quickly respond by writing those checks. So the LLC itself provides a couple of advantages. First of all, it's easy to set up relatively to most other types of entities. Second of all, it gives you some flexibility. 
And, and third, it is a separate legal entity unto itself. So you do get some limited asset protection by using that uh, entity formation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And so what is an LLC? Maybe we should get into that a little bit of a sure. description of, uh, of what it is. Well, there's different types of entities. As you know, there's a basic standard corporation, and then there's the limited liability company. And there's also partnerships. Uh, those are the three main ones. There are others. Uh, the LLC is sort of a hybrid. It gives you some of the uh, tax advantages of a partnership where the income flows through to the uh, members of the LLC. And at the same time, you get some of the uh, liability protection that a corporation provides you. Mm -hmm. OK. What are the main? components of a checkbook LLC? Well, they have a checkbook LLC uh, for the purposes of using your uh, self-directed IRA. The first and foremost, most important thing someone needs to do is open a self-directed IRA account. Okay. That's uh, people one. come to me and they have a transaction and they want to close escrow on Friday and here it is Tuesday afternoon and I'll ask them where are their funds and they say they're still with their 401k uh, with their uh, employer's custodian. Well, the the problem is that the funds need to be in an account held by an IRA custodian before you can do anything. So step one is open an SDIRA or self-directed IRA account. Mm -hmm. Second of all, you have to get the LLC registered and you have to do that. And that process can take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. You have to give it a name and you have to register it. The third component is to get the operating agreement. And for a self-directed checkbook control LLC, your operating agreement needs to be specialized so that it addresses the very specific concerns that the, IR, the IRS will be looking at in terms of avoiding prohibited transactions. Okay, we'll get into that in a little bit later. Uh, but the main thing I think that you were trying to get across is this isn't something you do the day before you're trying to close your deal. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Mike, I'm sure you have clients that come to you and say, you know, I've got to do this right now. You have a process called extensions that you can sometimes get your clients. No, you have to allow some time. It takes anywhere um, from three to five weeks to set up an LLC. It takes about the same amount of time to roll your funds over from a, a, a traditional custodian into a self-directed IRA. And you can do those two things in parallel, mm -hmm. um, but you need to allow about three to five weeks for this process to get set up. Yeah, so you really need to plan this a little bit, uh, think ahead, and uh, I think what it sort of boils down to is if you're thinking about uh, that eventually you would like to put some real estate uh, into your IRA or some other alternative investment, that to get the mechanics done you know, well in advance so that then when you want to write that check, the funds are in place and you're ready to go. <laughs> That's correct. And in order to do that, the funds do have to move from your traditional um, IRA into the self-directed IRA, and then they have to be then funded into the LLC once it's set up. Okay. Um, all right. So how is... Uh, a checkbook LLC for a Roth or an IRA different from a regular LLC.